In this video we're going to create an image using GIMP and add it to our background. Now for us to add an image to our image section of our first web page, we're going to need an image. So if you don't happen to have one, uh, say one that you've got from oh, some internet site or you've got a stash of images on your desktop or your uh, hard drive, and one of which being for background images, uh, then we can go ahead and create one real quick. Now you want to keep the image kind of small, not just in file size, but also size, size, because the larger the image, like anything else, the longer it's going to take for it to load, and which is for those folks that are still on dial-up, it's going to impede them you know, a great deal. So you don't want to have a, a huge image. Ideally, eh, let's keep it around 100 by 100. That's 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Now you can do this with uh, Photoshop, uh, Paint Shop, you know, Paint. Uh, I'm going to use GIMP because it's free and it's pretty powerful. It's kind of like a Photoshop for those of you that haven't been following along in some of my other videos. But GIMP is pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and open up the GIMP. And if you don't have it, we'll do a search on Google for GIMP, G-I-M-P. And the latest version as of the making of this video is like 2.4-ish on the verge of 2.5, which, anyway, it's pretty good. So first off, we're going to go to File, go to New. And remember now, this video is not on the GIMP, so you've got the Pause and Rewind or the slider bar of the video to control where we are on the video. So if you're not following along what I'm doing, don't sweat it, just do as I do. So we're going to go with 100 pixel wide by 100 pixel high. And go here to advanced options. We want, uh, what do we want? Um, we want to cancel this. And we want to first uh, make our foreground color. We'll click on that, and this, I'm sorry, it keeps popping up on my other monitor. And let's go with, um, let's say, green. That's a nice shade of green. Actually, that one will work. Okay, click on that, and then we've got that as a foreground. So now let me go back up here to File, New. We want to go with uh, 100 by 100. Click on Advanced Options. We want to go with Fill with foreground color, the one we just created. The rest of this, don't sweat it, just leave it alone. Move this on up here so we can see what we're doing. Click on OK. And this is what we've made. This is this layer here in particular. OK, now we want to add text. We go to the text. Now we want to change the color. And let's change it to, let's say, blue while we're at it. And, okay, so it may not be a pretty color. We're going to go with it because it's already there. Now, in the text, we just click on this. Here's our GIMP text editor. My domain.com. Okay, there we go. And we're going to click on close because that's good to go. Now we want to angle it so that's kind of going back and forth here. So first we're going to move it. Whenever you're moving here in GIMP, you want to make sure that you've got the right layer selected, okay? Now we want to angle this, or adjust the angle. Let's go with 15, shall we? This is the box that popped up, so we want to just click on Rotate if we're happy with it. Now we want to click on this to select it. Oh yeah, we want to move it. No, we don't want to move that one. Move this one. That looks fairly good. Okay, now then... We're going to save this image. Save as. We're going to save this as um, BG Image One because we're going to have uh, the Image Two here in a second. The Edge. Actually, yeah, we'll just name that one Edge. This one will be just BG Image Background Image. And then we're going to dot GIF. 
and we want to save it right here. That's in our uh, desktop HTML stuff. We want to save it in the same folder just for ease of purposes, and that way, if we were doing this on the on the reel, then we just upload that folder, and everything would be cool. Otherwise, you need the actual URL. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, let's um, pull this up here. Click on save and export and save. Okay, good to go. Now let's get this on out of the way here. We're going to need that again here in a second. Um, not that particular one, but we'll leave the GIMP open. So here's our image, and I'm, I've got it set up on my browser or on my desktop here not to show the extensions, but this is a GIF as you can see here in the little box there. So let's go ahead and I'm going to select that and get this in my clipboard. Let's minimize this. Oh, wait. Let's open this up in our notepad. Right click in our editor, rather, if you will, in this case being notepad. Scroll on down. And in our body tag here, this is what we want to put in here. I'm going to put a space and then type in the word background, B-A-C-K-G-R-O-U-N-D equal sign. Again, there's no spaces there. I want it double quotes. I'm going to hit it twice and then the backspace. Yeah, I'm just lazy that way. And then right click. I'm sorry. Hold my control key down and V for Victor to paste. Now and that's just copying the name in. I also need the extension to make this work. Dot G I F. Bada bing bada boom. Now then this will actually put that image um, on my page. And let me just kind of show you that. I'm going to hold my control key down, hit the letter S to save this. And now then let's open this up in our browser. And here we go. There we are. Now you can't really make it out too much. Um, and these little spaces here, don't sweat that because if you spend a little more time with the image, these spaces won't be there. It'll be solid across the board. This is what the what is called as tiling. The browser will repeat this box cross and down uh, infinity. I mean, for as wide as their browser allows it to, there being the visitors. You know, maybe they're maybe they've got a 29-inch monitor or a 15-inch uh, uh, monitor. Doesn't matter. It's going to tile across the width of their viewable space. Now, then, to make this a little bit easier to see, because you can see right here is the words. Let's go ahead and put a table in here so it'll make it easier. And that way too, I'll be able to show you how you can keep these things stationary, how you can keep the background images stationary as your page scrolls if it's a long enough page. So let's go ahead and back this guy up a bit, head on back over to our notes. And we need to add a table here. Now I'm not going to go into great detail on this just yet. I'm just going to do it. And we're going to get into uh, adding tables and fonts and text and that kind of stuff in an upcoming video. So just bear with me here. This is just to show off the actual background. Okay, now just briefly, and again we're going to go over this in greater detail in an upcoming video on tables, but I'm centering the table. That's the opening center tag, closing center tag, remember, yin yang, right, wrong, black, white. The opening table tag, closing table tag, and we'll get into the TR and the TD uh, row and data a little bit later on, again, in that other video. But this is the text that we just could barely see earlier. Now then, it, within this table, I want it 600 wide, and now this could be also, um, this is 600 pixels, this could also be a percentage, and again, we'll cover that later on. Now that partic this particular table, I want it to be white. This is the hexadecimal code for the color white. And just so that it can be scrollable, I made this particular table 1,200 pixels in height. So let's save this and check this out on our browser. This is currently, and let's refresh. Oh, yeah, one other thing, too, I forgot to mention. Anyway, let's go ahead and scroll down. And you see how the uh, background is scrolling with it? Here's the text right in the middle of the page. There's some codes that I can put in here to make it at the top of the page, but that again is going to be covered in a later video. That would be the align code, uh, vertical align or V-line. Okay, so anyway, the background is scrolling. Let us do this to where it is not scrolling. Let's head on back over to our text editor, 
and right in here we want to add another little bit of code. Just go to the space there, type in style equals and we want the double quotes in there again and then backspace to type within those two sets of double quotes. Background hyphen attachment colon F I X E D. So basically we're telling it to uh, the attached background image, we want it to be fixed. We don't want it to move. Okay? So let us save this, Control S, and then head on back over to our browser, refresh. You can see using the words here on our web page, it's the page itself is scrolling. The background images is remaining static. Okay? So I myself prefer it this way. This way, since I'm advertising my domain name.com, hint, hint, then people can readily see that, and you know it's a good advertisement. So that's how you can do that for the images. Now then, what we want to do now is do something similar with the edge by just um, adding an edge. And again, with the image, we've got it on both sides. Okay, with the edge, it's just going to be on the one side. So let me go ahead and tackle that now. Like the image, we need to create an edge. So let's open up our GIMP and go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and pick this up on our next video on changing the background of your HTML web pages.